Okay, you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it. There was one time I got really lucky and I reverse flicked this guy, but now it's not wanting to cooperate. Hello and what is going on guys? So welcome back to the channel. My name is Miguel and today we're gonna be reviewing the CRKT. Um, I know, I know you can reverse flick this guy. It's not the most comfortable way, but it is possible. I just did it a second ago. Oh my goodness. Today we're doing the review on the CRKT Piet, Piet, Piet. So it is actually pronounced Pete, Pete. This is a CRKT Pete. I know it's uh, spelled oddly there, P-I-E-T, but it's pronounced Pete. This is a Jesper Boxness design out of Denmark. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be... Um, Bruh. <laughs> we're gonna be reviewing this guy today. Uh, very, very excited to bring to you guys some feedback, share with you guys all of my impressions about this guy, making sure that um, you guys uh, get a good feel for what this little EDC is all about. Uh, we compared it recently to the Civivi Centilia. Uh, the review for this guy is also live on the channel. Check out the description, right? And the cards right here on the top right, if you wanna check that out. It is uh, gonna be on the smaller size. This guy's gonna have a thumb hole right so that's the slow opening right there look at that slow opening or you could uh, I guess if you get real good at it really fast there you go if you do like a sideways motion right there you could deploy it very quickly I'm trying not trying to get that there you go, just like that, right? So what are we dealing with with this guy? So we have some glass reinforced nylon GRN uh, type of scales for this guy, they're in black. They have this like orange peel type of pattern to it, you know, kind of like drywall in your house type of like ruggedness. It helps with the grip quite a bit, especially being uh, GRN, right? Glass reinforced nylon. Uh, this guy is a liner lock, right? So yep, liner lock right there part of the liner also helps to lock the blade in place like that okay and then as far as the blade right this is going to be a stainless steel acr 18 mov should have a decent corrosion resistance and should be very easy uh, or decently easy to sharpen let's get some uh, overall measurements on this guy this guy is going to be about six and a half inches long uh, maybe a little bit under six and a half inches the cutting edge is going to be two and a half two and a half inches and three and a quarter or three and three quarters for the overall blade size so cutting edge two and a half inches whereas the whole blade is going to be two and three quarters the handle is going to be a whopping three and i want to say three and three quarters overall uh yeah, three and uh, yep, three and three quarters. Yeah, more than three and a half right there. Three and three quarters on the handle. This guy likes to dance on the table. Look at that. Anytime he touches the table, it makes a dance. Look at this dude. <laughs> All right, let's do some size comparisons. There it is next to the pair of three. The, here is the uh, PM2. And keep in mind, um, comparing it to these knives because these are the standard comparison knives in the channel, right? Uh, definitely a lot smaller than both of these. Um, <laughs> they're smaller than the pair of three and definitely smaller than the PM2 for sure. Let's check out the AD 20.5 Denko Brothers right here. We have the uh, drop point blade and here is the shark's foot blade right there for your comparison, right? Let me know. Also, let me know if you like the uh, zoomed in angle right here, right? Typically, I keep it one angle throughout the whole video, but if you guys like this zoomed in angle more, definitely let me know in the comments. This guy is gonna be way smaller than obviously both of the Denko AD 20.5s. But again, just comparing them there for consistency purposes, since that's what we compare them to every single time we do a review. Also comparing them to the Senka brothers here. Here is the Crawley right there at the top. That's a obviously much larger, medium to larger knife. So is the Saxi. So the Pete. CRKT Pete is gonna be smaller, of course. And then last but not least, let's compare it to the Rat Model 1. Right, there's the Rap Model 1 and here's the Rap Model 2. I wanna say even the Rap Model 2, which is this Muller brother, this guy right here, even the P is smaller than that, right? Definitely smaller than the Model 2. And yeah, let's not even compare it to the Model 1 because this thing is on a 
whole different category. This I'm yet to find a knife in uh, my whole collection as of the moment that is bigger than the Rap Model 1. That's how big this guy is right here. Let's do some uh, more comparable comparisons. Uh, yeah, comparable comparisons. Here it is next to the Civivi Centilia, right? It is definitely very comparable to that guy. And I know it's not necessarily as small as the Elementum, but the Elementum is probably the next smaller knife, um, you know, smaller to medium knife there, uh, runner up in my collection. So there's a good uh, comparison right there for you. Let's do a quick folded profile right there, right? Once it's folded in your pocket, right? Compared to the Elementum, right? It's gonna be a little bit thicker than the Elementum, but not by much. Definitely um, a lot slimmer than the Centilia. Centilia there is uh, a lot wider. Comparing it to, we're, we're kind of going in reverse order here, right? So comparing it to the Ontario Brothers, the Ontario Rap Model 1, <laughs> that one's going to be way uh, wider, but it definitely compares to maybe a little bit wider than the Rap Model 2 uh, down here. Next to the Senka Brothers, right? Uh, the Saxi, which is this guy here, is going to be a little bit wider. The Crawley is going to be the more comparable one of the two, right there, right on the width. All right, here are the Demco brothers, and there you go, guys. See it for yourself. Yep, definitely uh, much slimmer, much narrower than the Demco 8020.5s, regardless of the blade shape. And here we are with the Spider Co. Spider Co's are always going to be the thicker ones to, um, you know, compare them to because of the Spidey hole, right? That circle hole that's very unique, very um, specific to Spider Co. That's going to make them a lot wider. And the Pete, right? here right i mean even with the thumb hole right the thumb hole is still very slim compared to these other guys right, while we're here let's do a quick uh profile right here it is a uh, carry profile it is probably just as thick as the pm2 compared to the para 3 para 3 right there yeah very comparable about the same comparing it to the demco brothers right the demcos are um 80 20.5 or especially the this rivalry. Uh, FRN are going to be a little bit slimmer. You can see it there for yourself. Next to the Senkot Saxi, all right, the Saxi is going to be a little bit uh, thicker. Next to the Crawley, all right, the Crawley is also going to be a little bit thicker. Next to the Ontario Rap Model 1, yeah, this guy is just going to be way thicker for sure. And next to the Ontario Rap Model 2, it's uh, more comparable to the Rap Model 2, no doubt about that. And uh, the P might be a hair thicker. Than the rap model too next to the elementum right there all right might be a little bit thicker than the elementum just a hair and here it is next to the centilia here it is next to the centilia take a look all right probably about the same thickness right there yeah same thickness as the centilia let's do a quick hardware check on this guy by the way guys the tools that i do use links will be in the description they are part of the strabito tool set uh, it's very affordable very reliable check them out on the affiliate links below uh, they do help out the channel highly recommend them and that is at no extra cost to you um, let's take a look at this guy i want to say uh, it does have a probably a ta in the pivot let's see if that is the case all right yeah ta in the pivot it, no doubt about that and I want to say very similar to the Civivis right it's gonna probably be T6 all the way around right T6 yeah and the handle uh, these are recessed screws in the pocket clip which are very very nice and they are T6 as well I want to kind of try a T7 there just for you know fair measurement and yeah the T7 is gonna be too big so again to summarize T6 everywhere else except the pivot the pivot is going to be T8 let's get a quick blade stock thickness on this guy all right this guy is going to be on the thickest point is gonna be point 12, 0.12 inches, right? And on the slimmer end, on the very, very tip, it's gonna be 0 0.02, right? 0 0.02 right there. Try it again, 0 0.02 right there on the very, very tip. Let's get a quick weight measurement on this guy here really quick. Let's see, my guess, right, for comparison purposes, right, the Scintilla, Savivi Scintilla was 2.8, right? I wanna say this guy might be 2.9, right? That is gonna be my guess. Also, the Elementum, by the way, for reference, is gonna be 2.8, right? 
So this guy, I want to say my guess, 2.8, 2.9. Look at 2.5, 2.5. So 2.5 ounces, yeah, definitely a lot uh, lighter than some of the other guys. I think the GRN has something to do with it as well. All right, let's talk the experience on this guy, right? So of course you have only one deployment option and one deployment option only on this guy. You have no flipper, no button. So this thumb hole here is your only option. So you could either open it like that with a quick open, right? Or you could take it slow, right? It's just gonna enjoy the opening right there with the thumb hole. But yeah, that thumb hole is gonna be your only deployment <laughs> option on this guy, uh, which, you know, is gonna be uh, a let down for me personally. Now, if you're really into thumb holes, that's fine. But I kind of would have liked some other type of um, deployment option. And you're probably thinking, okay, Miguel, well, you can probably reverse flick this guy. Well, actually you cannot, right? Because you see the indentation that you have on this side is completely missing on the other side, right? So that indentation there, which helps you do the thumb deployment on the right hand, right? If you were left-handed, right? I know they have the reverse pocket clip, which is very nice. And they have that for left-handed people. But if you're left-handed, I mean, how are you possibly, I mean, you're really gonna struggle a lot to get that working the same way that you do on the other side. I mean, how much more difficult would it have been to make an indentation, right? How much more difficult would it have been to make the same indentation on this end? And I know you're probably thinking, okay, well, Miguel, it gets in the way of the liner lock, right? Well, maybe make the liner lock a little bit indented as well, you know, kind of play around with the design a little bit. But hey, you know, I'm not a knife designer, although maybe one day I will, who knows, right? I always dream about being one, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, that being said, that's probably my only gripe with that, with this guy. Yeah, that's probably my only gripe right now is the fact that, yeah, the reverse opening right here on this guy, it's very, very sketchy. Yeah, it's not, not even, it is so unpredictable, it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, that's that's not happening at all whatsoever. So again, you got uh, glass reinforced nylon GRN handles here, right, in this nice grippy pattern. And the blade is going to be a drop point right, drop point blade, uh, ACR 18 MOV, uh, stainless steel, uh, very corrosion or somewhat decent corrosion resistance and it should be nice to sharpen when the time comes. It is on this satin finish and uh, yeah, as you can see with the thumb opening back and forth, uh, this is gonna be a fingerprint magnet for sure. All your fingerprints are gonna be there constantly so you're gonna have to give it a wipe down every once in a while, at least every time you use it. And you do have this uh, backspacer right here, right? So this backspacer, uh, uh, in the back. <laughs> back spacer in the back. Wow. Fancy talk today. Uh, you have it in blue here, the aluminum blue looking. So that kind of gives it a nice accent right there. Uh, if you're into that lanyard hole, right? You got a big one right there in the back, right? Which can be accessible from both sides. So that's very nice as well. The pocket clip is going to be very deep carry, which is very nice also, right? So the entire knife should be able to tuck away when you put it in your pocket, which is very nice. All right, so you can see right there, no uh, portion of the knife should be showing, right? When you have these uh, pocket clip right here, very similar to the Centella, right? So I wanna say, yeah, uh, about the same length, right? And it gets the job done. It hides the knife very nice and discreet in the pocket. Uh, no jimping on this guy. So you can see there, there's no jimping going on at all on the top of the blade. And I want to say for the same reason, right, for the same reason that the Ortis doesn't have jimping here, and for the same reason that the uh, Fleece folding knife doesn't have jimping either. So anytime you have some sort of thumb hole deployment, right, what I found, and this is not rocket science, but uh, especially for newbies out there, right, typically when you have some sort of thumb deployment, it's very hard to find jimping going on at the very top. It kind of weakens, kind of weakens that spot right there a little bit. So I, I've seen a lot of designers, knife designs that don't have any jimping whatsoever when the knife has some sort of thumb hole. Uh, maybe the only exception to that might be on the Spider Coast, right? On the Spider Coast, you have some jimping 
but up to a certain extent, right? So there's jimping up until, you know, where the circle starts. And yeah, there's no more jimping the rest of the way. So that way it doesn't make that steel uh, weaker. Let's not forget about the paper cutting test. I've been EDC in this guy already for a couple of weeks. So um, let's see how much of an edge it has retained. All right, look at that. Just like back when it came out of the box. This guy is super duper sharp and for a tiny knife right and it's small but mighty look at that nice clean cuts all the way right without hesitation you guys be the judge right there oh wait a second there we go oh wait wait a second wait a moment Sometimes I feel like I don't, I don't catch the, the sheet of paper, the right angle that may cause it to not cut well. But look at that, yeah, it definitely makes clean cuts, no doubt about that. Let's take a look at the blade alignment right there. It's definitely a little bit towards the right. Uh, yeah, definitely a little bit towards the right there. Uh, not necessarily 100% centered. I wonder if I can probably adjust that a little bit here. All right, I went ahead and timed it some more. And if anything, <laughs> it actually got closer to the right side than the left side. So let me go ahead and loosen it now. All right, went ahead and loosened it a little bit back to where it was. And as you can see, yeah, there's a little bit of... Uh, you know, play in the blade, I guess. Yeah, it definitely steers towards the right a little bit, so not quite 100% centered, if you will. That might be something specific to this knife and this knife only, right? Tying it only made it uh, way more disaligned. So I went ahead and kind of put it back to around where it was originally. So if that doesn't get on your nerves, then <laughs> you should be all right. So in conclusion, guys, this is a nice uh, little EDC for around $30. Typically goes on sale around $29.95 or so. I got this guy on special at Blade HQ for around $15, right, during the holidays. So you often find some specials like that out there, uh, some sales or special events like that, where you could get it at a deep discount. I think full price is around $35 also. Make sure to check out the uh, links in the description. Uh, they do help out the channel at no extra cost to you. But yeah, overall, if you're looking for that small uh, factor, right, the conclusion is going to be very similar to the one from the Civivi Centilia, right? If you're looking for a small factor knife, right, uh, probably a good secondary. If you're already carrying, uh, let's say, a medium to larger knife as a primary, maybe you're looking for a specific smaller knife as a secondary, right, you definitely cannot go wrong with the CRKT Pete. That is definitely my recommendation right there, guys make sure to check it out let me know if i miss anything during the review right guys let me know if there was anything specific that i missed that you would have loved to have seen during the review if you have any specific questions also let me know in the comments i'll be happy to answer those for you as well and anything you'd like to see in future reviews let me know by the way guys if you made it this far you guys are the real mvps um, there's a possibility by the time uh, you're done watching this video that the review for the send cut taxi is live in the channel this is a solid and very fidgety EDC. I'll put a card right here if that review is ready to go so you guys can watch that next. Thank you guys for uh, checking out the video here, making it this far. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.